Hello, today I'm going to be talking about Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. This came out in 2013. Um, it was shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction and is a highly acclaimed novel. It's about a girl called Ife Melu who grows up in Nigeria and then moves to the US for university. Um, she spends about 13 years in America before going back to Nigeria. It also follows her high school sweetheart Obinze who fails to follow her to the US um, so they kind of drift apart. He moves to Britain for a while and then back to Nigeria. Um, and has a family in Nigeria and they eventually reunite after being apart from each other for about 15 years. This is the definition of a good book. It's really powerful, it has lots of very important things to say and it's exceptionally well written. But it didn't really capture me for some reason. I, was, I think I just had a lot of expectations on it. Um, there was only one thing that I explicitly didn't like um, and that was the sort of romantic determinism of knowing these two people were going to uh, reunite at some point. Um, but the rest of it, I feel like it was a, a novel of two halves, very much so. So one half was about um, Ifemelu's life in being black in America, about the experience of being black in America. And then the other half was about the culture of Nigeria, which I find way more fresh and interesting to hear about. Hearing about what life is like in Nigeria with frequent um, like electricity outages and nepotism in government and this kind of really vast range of economic opportunity. I find all that really, really interesting. There was actually one bit towards the end that I thought put this really well um, that was talking about an old house that had been abandoned and was kind of falling apart um, and Ibinze is in, in real estate. So he says, when I started in real estate, I considered renovating old houses instead of tearing them down. But it did make sense. Nigerians don't buy houses because they're old. A renovated 200 year old mill granary, you know, the kind of thing Europeans like, it doesn't work here at all. But of course it makes sense because we're third worlders and third worlders are forward thinking. We like things to be new because our best is still ahead. While in the West, their best is already past, so they have to make a fetish of the past. Yeah, that whole conflict of like old versus new and whether being like an economic migrant um, is like a betrayal on your own culture and country and how there's kind of like this expectation to feed back into your like family in Nigeria. The other half of things about being black in America, yes, we are going to talk about race. I'm kind of on the verge of being one of those white people that struggles to talk about race because I fear getting things wrong and YouTube comments are a particularly vicious place for that kind of thing. And in that way, I feel quite awkward about criticizing that aspect of the book. Um, but the reason it didn't draw me in is that I think I've really internalized that narrative. Like in, in so much as I'm capable of empathizing with the black American experience, I think I do. Like I, I'm not sure there's, <laughs> there's much more room to be had. And this feels like, I mean, it was written in 2013. It's very much a kind of intro into the black American experience. There's a point in this where Aoife Melu sits down her white boyfriend because he um, was looking at a magazine that she was reading that's like a black women's magazine and was like, isn't that skewed towards black women? And she has to take him to the bookshop and get all of these other women's magazines off the shelf to prove to him of the poor black representation. There's so many of those kind of like classic um, white people getting something wrong about race things in this book uh, that like I think I'd already elevated myself beyond. <laughs> a large part of the content of the book is Ifemelu writing a blog about um, being black but not not being African-American but being like an African black person in uh, in American culture and all of the race implications of that. So there's a lot of kind of heavy-handed explanations um, of of racial issues. And it's so tantalizing seeing Ifemelu have all of this anger, all of this like very, very righteous anger, but then have to kind of conform it into a way that just, just like teeters along the surface of what is acceptable to, for her to talk about. And I think she is remarkably giving as a character, like the amount of time she spends explaining through her blog to her audience and also to individuals like, the way that they don't understand her experience and the experience of other black people. And she handles that emotional burden with such composure. And thinking about that, it made me think about like how this book came to exist. Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie was born and raised in Nigeria, but moved to America, I think also for university or in her twenties at some point. Uh, so this is very much like her lived experience. But I was reading this and thinking like, this is, 
arguably now her most popular book. And is it only popular because like Americans can't just read about a different culture, there has to be some aspect of their own culture in it? Like is the only way to get Americans to read about Nigeria to have half a book set in America? And not necessarily just Americans, like all of Western culture is the only way to get them to learn about other cultures by sort of sneaking it in. That is like a very cynical, <laughs> cynical way of thinking about it. But I do think it's interesting to think about because I thought both sides of this book could stand on their own. And although this was a book club book, so I discussed this um, with two of my girlfriends and they were like, yeah, but the if you didn't have like the context of the other thing, it would make it a lot less powerful, which I guess is true. but. It just really felt like different books to me. Continuing on the race topic, I thought it was really interesting how she treated the difference between um, being an African-American, like descended from slaves, uh, versus being a recent immigrant from Africa, and how these are kind of two distinct factions. In this bit where she's at university um, and with another uh, African immigrant friend um, who's giving her advice on like how to operate in this university. Try and make friends with our African-American brothers and sisters in a spirit of true pan-Africanism. But make sure you remain friends with fellow Africans as this will help you with your perspective. And then it says, please note in general, African-Americans go to the Black Student Union and Africans go to the African Student Union. And then later on it says, you'll also find that you may make friends more easily with other internationals, Koreans, Indians, Brazilians, whatever, than with Americans, both black and white. It's an interesting distinction. And I think it's not just about having more of an affinity with other immigrants, but it's that the African-American story has such an entrenched identity that it kind of seems like it's a different battle that's being fought. One of my book club girls, co-workers, who is black and British, um, was saying that it's actually, like this book is quite offensive to African-Americans because it kind of like sub-classifies them against like the true Africans, which is a fair comment because they are treated as a very kind of like distinct um, separate group in here and even like Ife Melu um, dates a uh, an African-American man and they had so much in common but there was also just this complete other aspect that he couldn't understand. African-Americans versus white Americans it's obviously like the whole historical context of slavery and about everyday racism based on the colour of your skin but with recent African immigrants it's about um, holding on to your African identity and assimilating and um, it's a different challenge. Another big theme besides race is obviously immigration and having these parallel narratives of Ifemelu uh, having this American visa and discovering what it is to be black, like she didn't consider herself black when she was in Nigeria, but because it's this whole thing in America, um, you know, it becomes a huge part of, of, of what she spends her time thinking about. Um, so we have that and then we also have Abinze who um, moves to Britain as an illegal immigrant, he hasn't got his papers and he almost like doesn't have the luxury to think about his identity as a black immigrant because his sole focus is on the immigrant side of it, like the literally not being able to work and feeling like he's going to be caught out any second. I found that really compelling reading and I realised I don't think I've read any books about um, immigrants to the UK or about illegal immigrants, is that quite true? Um, anyway, if you have any recommendations in that realm, really would be up for hearing them. Talking to my boyfriend about this was rather illuminating actually because he read it maybe like six months ago and he really connected with the immigration side of things. Um, Cause I mean, he's, he's, he's an immigrant in that he immigrated from Ireland to England, um, which I don't think carries with it much discrimination, uh, but just like, the whole um, being separated from your home and adopting a new kind of cultural identity, um, he, yeah, really connected with that. And I can totally see why this book would really connect to you um, if you were an immigrant or if you lived in America or if you lived in Nigeria. For me, it was more just like dipping in and seeing what life is like. Um, but yeah, I did enjoy it. I thought it was really good writing. And um, that's it for now. Let me know what you thought of it down in the comments below. And I will see you in another book review soon. Thanks. Bye.